I know you don't like long videos, so I'm gonna try and wrap this up as quick as possible and explain things as thoroughly as possible. So this clip is a shot from Motion Array, and for some reason, her shirt is missing some details. So if you're wondering later on what's going on down there, it wasn't me, I promise. So something you can use in Final Cut that's extremely useful, if you don't know about it already, is your comparison viewer. And you can access that by pressing Control, Command, and 6. This will bring up a side-by-side -side window so you can access different frames on your timeline, so you can color correct or grade two frames to match them up well. But you can also go ahead and add frames from different movies or different references in your frame browser just by hitting Save Frame. And that way you can kind of get a better feel of how you want your color grade to look. So I have a bunch of different frames here from different movies and TV shows, and we're gonna kind of make a mishmash of these, perhaps something closer to this new frame from the Bob Marley movie. And as you can see, it's very warm, it's very inviting, and we want something similar. So the first thing we're gonna do is add our contrast and our saturation. We want our shot to pop a little bit more, and in order to do that, we need to add contrast. This is a very flat looking image. So I'm also gonna press Command 7 to bring up our video scopes. And we're gonna wanna make sure that we have the Luma waveform up because this measures brightness. Let's expand our dynamic range out. So the difference between the very darkest point and the very brightest point by going to our shadows exposure slider. So this adjusts the brightness of our shadows and we'll bring it down closer to zero IRE, but not below it because that erases detail in the very darkest parts of the shot, and we don't want that. We want to keep as much detail as possible in this instance. It's not always bad to go below zero, but um, in this instance, we don't want it. As far as our highlights brightness or exposure, we don't really wanna be pushing this up towards 100 because we want a filmic look. And if you notice in a lot of films, the highlights sit closer to 75, 80 IRE, sometimes lower. We can even see that in our reference frame here. If we pull up our Luma waveform, uh, it's kind of a shame because we do have some white around these edges and stuff. But if you pay attention to this, we have the very brightest part of the shot, which is right in this area, sitting at about 8590. So let's go ahead and turn off the video scopes for this. And let's adjust that accordingly. Maybe something right about there. And then we can add more contrast in by adjusting our midtones. So once you fine tune in your highlights and shadows, you'll find that adjusting your midtones exposure slider does quite a lot for adding the contrast that you want. And now let's go ahead and take our global saturation slider, which affects the saturation or intensity of color in all of the image and just boost this up. We're gonna be pulling back a little bit later on, but let's just crank it up for now. So with that out of the way, let's rename this. Let's call it contrast and sat. I'm so glad that we're able to do this in Final Cut, renaming different corrections now. It's long overdue. Let's add another color wheels. And for this instance, we'll call it the, whoops, you can't double click there. We'll call this the look adjustment. Now this is where we're gonna go ahead and start to create the look that we want. I'm gonna bring up the vector scope, which shows where our hues are lying in the shot, as well as our saturation levels. We're gonna start by going to our highlights hue slider, which lets you push color from the color wheel into the highlights or the very brightest parts of your shot. However, these wheels also affect each other gradually. And what I mean by that is by adjusting your highlights, it also is gonna affect your midtones a little bit and then your shadows a little bit less. So it's a gradual adjustment with these wheels. And we're really gonna start pushing in some of that warm color. I know their skin is overly saturated and it looks gross now. Stick with me. We're gonna adjust it in a second. I think something right about there looks pretty good. And something else that's useful you can do in your shots is pull in the opposite direction with your opposite color wheel. So we were adjusting our highlights. So now let's adjust our shadows away from the orange. This is gonna introduce some of this cyan into the very darkest parts of our image and create more color contrast because you have opposing colors, orange and cyan. But we're not gonna push too much. In this instance, we want the shot to stay pretty warm. We just want some slight color contrast. And if you're wondering what did that even do, if we look at the very darkest parts of our image, if I turn this off, 
and then reset it. Just notice how it almost evens out his hair, cools it off a bit. Yes, we are pushing color into this, into the very darkest parts of our shot, but we will adjust that. And then I think we should play around with our mid-tones hue slider and maybe push some more warmth into our mid-tones. Now, skin tones generally lie in the mid-tones, so this is going to be affecting their skin, but like I mentioned, we will adjust uh, how gross this looks in a second. We'll park this here for now. As far as a temp look, this is a good starting point. Yes, we do need to make some tweaks for sure. It's not perfect by any means. And so in order to do that, it's ideal to use your hue saturation curves. These are a great, great way. These are a great way to tweak things in your shot on a very granular level. So let's start with our hue versus hue curve. This lets you change the color of whatever color you want. So in this instance, I'm using the picker to select the blue of the ocean, and I'm just going to switch it to be more cyan. That way it matches that complementary color look that we have going on with the orange of their skin and uh, more of a pleasing cyan look to oppose it. Let me minimize this frame just a little bit so we have a bigger viewport here. We can just have that off to the side. Now let's go to hue versus sat. This lets you adjust the intensity of color in whatever color you want. So in this instance, I'm gonna select the blue and I just wanna take out some of the blue. It's too distracting uh, in this shot. This of course is up to you. You can leave that in. I just want something a little bit muted, a little bit more muted at least. And we're also gonna do the same just for his, their skin. Just pulling the orange down. We don't wanna do too much. Um, uh, what we can do here is look at our vector scope. And if I crop into their skin, ideally you want skin to be 10 to 40% of the skin tone line if you connect the yellow or red hue. And in this instance, it looks like we are doing pretty well. It's about 10 to, it's about around 40% if you connect these two. So we'll leave it here and let's just turn off the crop. We can maybe use that just a little bit later. Let's head down to Hue versus Luma. This adjusts the brightness of whatever color you want, but you have to be careful with this curve because it will tear apart your image. If I just really crank this, I guess it does a pretty good job, but you can see right around here, we have our, our pixels uh, starting to break a little bit. So let's not do too much. I just kind of wanted to pull down the exposure. Actually, maybe I'll even push it up. I thought um, darkening our C would look a little bit better, but Brightening it up seems to do uh, a better job. And the last thing we're gonna do in our HSL curves is go to our Luma versus Sat. This adjusts the intensity of color in different brightness values. So just by using our picker here and selecting his dark hair, you have the darkest parts of your shot to the left, the very brightest parts of your shot to the right, and we can decrease the intensity of color uh, or the saturation in those areas by dropping this down, just making a slight uh, slight drop off and if you want to see what that did let me zoom in so we can see what we got going on here so we have before after you see how that just cleans things up you can go a long way in your grades if you make skin accurate not always if you're creating a stylized cinematic look skin isn't always going to be on this skin tone line right here but more often than not, usually you want it pretty close and you can go a long way with your grades if your blacks are black and if your whites are white. In this instance, I don't really care if our whites are white, we want it to be nice and warm, but it would be nice if our blacks are closer to black. And I actually think we should add more warmth into our shot. I think we're being too conservative. Uh, so let's go to our look adjustment. We'll go to our highlights. So it affects the highlights down, which is how the sun naturally shines light on this earth. And we'll just push the hue slider towards, uh, towards orange, something like that. That is going to affect their skin a little bit. Perhaps I'll tweak this so it's a little less in the mid-tones. And that's looking pretty good. I think if we pull up our frame browser and just look at some of these different shots, we are kind of in the middle of all of them, obviously closest to the Bob Marley, of course, but uh, yeah, pretty good. The final thing you could do if you have this plugin or if you wanna get this plugin, which is a great filmic plugin, I think one of the best out there as far as adding little finishing touches is Dehancer. So all I did was I added some film compression, which doesn't do a lot in this instance because the shot is not that bright. We don't have many bright areas to compress down. We also have film grain, but we're not using that. We could, but 
Uh, YouTube does a pretty bad job with film grain, although Dehancer seems to be the best at showing film grain on YouTube that I've tried. We have some halation around the very brightest contrasty edges of the shot, and also some bloom. So with all that together, let's see what we did here. We have the before and we have the after. And if I play this out, although I should probably switch my timeline to better quality so we can see the sharp image. And of course, <laughs> my fast M3 Max computer still struggles with playing that out, which is crazy to me, but it's looking pretty good. So we went ahead, ahead and we added our contrast and our saturation, made it more of a standard looking Rec. 709 shot. And then we went ahead and added our look. Obviously way too much saturation, but we dialed it back with our hue saturation curves. And then we went ahead and added our Dehancer plugin. And it's looking pretty solid, very warm, very inviting. And as far as matching up with our reference frames, I think we did a pretty good job. And if you are wanting to learn way more, check out my FCP color grading masterclass. I go way more in depth. I have a lot more material and it will help you to get better looking results when it comes to color correction and color grading. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time.